The venue is the Montego Bay Sports Complex at Catherine Hall. The occasion, the deciding game for the most prestigious title in rural area schoolboy football in Jamaica, the Da Costa Cup. And the teams with both the fortune and quality to get here, Clarendon College and Dintil Technical. This is a matchup that has brought so much joy for Clarendon College in recent years. Conversely, it has come with much despair for Dintil Technical. Clarendon College knocking them out at the semi-final stage in the last two editions. Now they meet though in the ultimate contest, the winner taking the cup. These are the teams who have distinguished themselves as the best in this part of the land. Notwithstanding the slow start, Dintel are unbeaten in their last seven, while Clarendon College have prolonged a two-year unbeaten run. Now, just one win away from a second season of invincibility. Clarendon College, Dintel Technical, for the right to be the 2019 Water Da Costa Cup champions. As the ISA president, Keith Wellington, leads the official party, yours truly, Ricardo Chambers and Dwight Jeremiah to entertain you through what we hope will be a spectacle that will live long in our memories. Yes, Ricardo, we're expecting uh, a very, very good contest between these two teams. Clarendon College, much was expected of them to, in terms of lifting all three trophies available to them this season. Well. They fell short in the Champions Cup. I'm pretty sure for this, the Da Costa Cup, they are ready. The Jamaica Football Federation President Michael Ricketts, part of the official party as well. Representatives of the various sponsors. This is a moment not just for the players, but for the administrators and for the sponsors. Their moment in the spotlight before the spotlight solely turns to those 22 players. National Anthem of Jamaica. The Dintel Technical Players. Meet the officials and the Clarendon College Players. This is their moment. It's what you train for. It is what you work for. Stefan Duar will take charge of this contest. Damien Williams, the first assistant. Rolanza Bennett, the second assistant. Veralta Nemhard, who has done so many finals, will be the fourth official. Let's have a look at the lineup starting with Clarendon College. The captain Earl Simpson at centre back leads the defensive line. Rose Chambers and Williams in midfield. And their potent strike force should be looking to come good again. All 10 starters have scored this season for the defending champions, led by Sheldon Smart with 13 goals. In this 4 3 3 formation, just look at that front three. That's the, uh, the part of this formation that you feel will have to click tonight. Those big front three will have to come up trumps for Clarendon College. Dintil Technical know they are poised for greatness. An opportunity to lift this prestigious club. 
Dintel on a seven match win streak. Karim Bryan has been solid for them all season. He's their leading scorer with six. But Gio Lane came up big in the semis with a brace. Watch for him again, even as they look for a complete team effort to try and repel the might of Clarendon College. And uh, Dintel, they played a conventional 4 4 2. But look for Bryan and Facey. Those are two who's going to be critical. Without the ball, they must tuck in and they must do all that work to make sure they don't go numbers down in the middle of the park to Clarendon College. Xavier Gilbert is the head coach of Dintil, Roderick Granville, the Clarendon College number 14 The player to watch for them. He's been good this season. Eight goals to his credit, Roger Granville. Surely he's had a lot of water coming into this. 19 years old now in his third season. 15 appearances this season and netting those eight goals. But he need to come up big for them tonight. Granville didn't fire in his last outing for Clarendon College in that uh, Champions Cup. Mm. Roger Lane came up big in the semi-finals for Dintel Technical. Just had his 19th birthday this midfielder. 11 appearances. And uh, of course, those two goals coming in the semi-finals. And he looks ready for business in the biggest match of his young career. As a good player, he has pace, he, got, he has good skill, and he works very hard. Like I said, started the season very slow, Lane. Uh, scored seven goals last season, this season, just the two goals, but they came at the right time. The final opening whistle of the 2019 Water De Costa Cup season. Clarendon College versus Dintel Technical. Clarendon searching for back-to-back -back titles for only the second time in their history. They won it in 77 and 78, the only time they've gone back-to-back. -back. Their technical director, Lenworth Hyde, was on that team that won the first title. And here he is trying to guide them to back-to-back -back wins 40 years later. It was Dintel Technical, incidentally, who ended that two-year title run. And they would want to stop it at one this time around. Clarendon College going forward early. Tajay Williams loses possession. Now Dintel go the other way. That's broken up quickly. Richard King with the clearance, not getting it as cleanly as he would have liked, but Granville picks it up now for Clarendon College. Teje Williams picks out Jamari Howell. Has Larmond in front of him, finds him. Larmond slips it forward into space. Forcing the Dintel technical defense into action. Xavier Gilbert in his second season with this Dintel technical team. Williams. Howell. Looking for Granville. Smart trying to win it. Smart gets it. There's a chance for Roderick Granville. Couldn't turn it towards goal. David Chambers with a neat pass inside. And Granville should have hit the target there. Certainly should have hit the target there from within the six yard box and always falling backwards and didn't get over that football as well as he would want. And sailing over the top. What a start for Clarendon College in the Da Costa Cup final. David Chambers. Oh, finds more space. 
Gentil technical defense on the siege early. This is a Clarendon team that means business. Howell for Williams. Back in defense comes to Richard King. Howell again. Loses Bryant and finds Granville or does he? Now to Smart. Smart is trying to work his way through. Dintel escaping one more time. It's a very fast start from Clarendon College, really putting Dintel on the siege, not allowing them to settle early in this encounter. Dintel, though, will not mind not having the football. They play a lot of counter attacking football. And uh, speaking with Coach Gilbert, he was saying, possession don't really win you the game, it helps you, but he doesn't mind. If Clarendon College continue to play like this, then Dintel Technical may well want the ball. This one falls to laid off for Granville. Under pressure, loses possession. The pressure is on. Williams goes left. Cross from Reed. Left a lot to be desired over the top. Normally, Reed's deliveries are normally good into the box, and that occasion didn't get it right. But what is going to be important for Dintel in these early stages, first 10 15 minutes of this encounter, if they can stay within this game, nil all, then I think uh, they will settle a lot better. Need to weather the storm, Dilton. Dintel. Jaheim Rose on the football for Clarendon College, picks out Howell. Jamari Howell looking for the forward pass. Cut out on this occasion. First five minutes belonging to Clarendon College. I think they're trying to undo. Let's see if Dintil can break here. Finding it difficult. Rose. We've seen Clarendon College at their best this season. Whenever a player is on the ball, he usually has several options in terms of passes. And Dintil will want to try and close down the spaces. Over the top looking for Larman. Dintil trying to settle. Prince Daniel Roberts does the business at the back. Here's a lovely ball play through for Chambers. Just didn't get it under his control. The flag stayed down and he would have been in on goal. It's a good run, but good ball there. Good pass by Smart. Chambers making good run from outside in. And timed his run to perfection. Just didn't take his first touch to perfection. Well on side there. Chambers just a little bit behind him. And that just gave him a little bit of a problem. Larman, Granville, Smart, Chambers, all off to a fine start for Clarendon College in the Da Costa Cup final. Several of them waiting on this corner kick as well. Played back inside by King. Now cleared away. Williams didn't control well. But Reed does well to win it for Clarendon College. Teche Williams for Reed. Now they go forward again. The cross looking for Smart doesn't get to the Clarendon College number 12. Granville looking business like at the start of this the Costa Cup final. One of the two things that I'm seeing here with, with Dintel, they would have seen with McGrath in the semi finals, slight form of the blueprint against this Clarendon College team staying behind. Long throw inside the box. Chambers tries to go for the left footed shot. This is lovely movement of the football from Clarendon College. Ball back inside.
Lane runs into traffic. Regia Lane trying to break and relieve his team early in this final. In a situation like this, Lane is definitely going to have to be their go-to player, Adintil, when coming out because he has pace, he has good skills. And uh, there he was stopped in his track by King. Unfairly so, though. But Lane is going to be big for Dintil today. And as long as Dintil does not concede, oh, we see the goalkeeper, Tamara Hill, is down for Dintil Technical. And, and maybe in a case, it's just to try and, and stop this uh, incessant onslaught from Clarendon College. So they're using the opportunity to get in some a word to the players at Dintel, just trying to break the rhythm of this land and college team early on. But as long as Dintel will feel, as long as they do not concede, during this period of pressure from Clarendon College, they would have done well. Clarendon College starting on the front foot exactly where they like to be. But we caught it. You felt Dintel would have looked at the McGrath and the Kingston College game in the Champion Cup final to use it as a blueprint against this Clarendon College team in terms of getting numbers behind the ball, blocking those passing lanes. You spoke about Clarendon College when they're on the ball. Two or three players are to the... He has optioned the man on the ball, two or three options. They need to get in behind the ball and block those passing lanes. Dintel trying to get into the contest with Karen Bryan. Free kick, Clarendon College. Let's see if that break worked in Dintil's favor, or if Clarendon College will pick up where they left off. Omar Reed searching for Granville, unable to find him on that occasion. David Dane Chambers. Rose to Reed. Steps it forward for Larman. Larman trying to find Smart. Doesn't get to him. A long range shot comes in. But that goes over the top. Clarendon College will want to press on their advantage in this open 12 minutes. Opening 12 minutes of the encounter would like to get a goal. Coach Gilbert showing that he's a wily customer. I mean, using all his experience to break up the rhythm of a Clarendon College. Clarendon College, we know when they're in full flow, they are superb. But we've seen them on a couple of occasions this season not maintaining that for long enough periods, even in games that they've won comfortably. And in this final, that is something they surely will want to fix. Granville trying to win the ball. He gets taken down and wins the free kick for CC. We did hear Coach Hyde on a few occasions lamenting that he really wanted a perfect game. He would want it here, but he's always tugging. Both players were tugging each other, but in the end, I think it didn't tell that occasion just too much force. Smart seems to be having some difficulty here. He's down on the turf on his knees. Omar Reed standing over it. Larman 
joins him as well. Reed. Charged down. Larman gets it back in. Smart heads it on. Wide of the target. It's all Clarendon College in this opening 14 minutes here. Really, really keeping Dintel pegged in their own half. In fact, in their own penalty area, as you look at here, there's a chance playing it back while the defence is coming out, looking to catch them unawares. Oh, ball given away in a dangerous position. One back by Dintel, but they can't hold on to it for too long. They have a free kick. A moment of relief coming up. Boy, Dintel, need, Dintel needs it. They really have been under the cost from the opening whistle. Green trying to win it for Dintil. There's a long range effort. No problems for Prince Daniel Smith in goal. The former Camperdown lead man between the sticks in control for Clarendon College. There's Marquise Campbell. Was at Rasiz when they won the title in 2017 and beat Clarendon College in the final. Now he gets his chance to be on the park to help Dintil. Dintil on the front foot here. Lane trying to get free, always under pressure. Laney's going to find himself a lot on his own today, but definitely, like I say, a capable player and an outlet for this Dintel team once they get possession. Omar Reed. That familiar long ball with the left foot. Handled much easier on this occasion by the Dintel technical defense. Dilton won't want to give Reed too much opportunity to make his passes. He's normally good at doing those short and long range passes. The captain Earl Simpson dispossessed. Now Dintil trying to attack on the right. Jane Williams doing a good job on Carlington Facey, who was trying to get away for the Dintel technical team. Chambers spreads it left for Larman. Larman cuts inside and throws it towards goal. Over the top. Shaylan Larman, the former Jamaica College player, Strutting his stuff in the Da Costa Cup final. And you wonder if there was a better option there for him to pick out Granville, who was at the far post. I think he acknowledged that. Dintil getting into their own now. But the Clarendon College defense, as they have been all season, standing resolute. Karim Bryan wins a free kick. Like I said, the first 15 minutes of this encounter was always going to be important for Dintel and the fact that they have did, did not concede a goal during that period. And we see them coming out a little bit more now. And Coach Gilbert will be quite pleased with that. Spoke to him, Karim Bryan, before this final. Asked him if the left foot was ready. He said both feet were ready. College on their way. Another attack. More pressure on the Dintel technical defense. They managed to escape. Good defensive work by Ty Wedderburn. Now the long ball does not have the direction necessary. Wedderburn, we see what he was trying to do to release his, his player further up the field, but he did has, have option. 
closer to him and that would possibly retain the possession, possession better for him and be able to, to mount a better attack. And this is just going to come back at them now with that ball just punt up field. The contest is evening out somewhat in the last three to four minutes. Yeah, somewhat. You still see Clarendon with the edge as we see a player for them down. Not since 1982. Not since 1982 have they won this trophy. And Xavier Gilbert in his second season as head coach is trying to bring them the ultimate prize. And I asked him recently what about history and the fact that they have been stopped in the last two seasons by this grand back and college. He says, well, yeah, that's history. They use it as motivation, but it doesn't play on the day. So for him, he's looking to just turn the tides here for a dintel against Clarendon College. Norman taken down from behind. Brian and Carlington Facey ensuring that no quick kick will be taken. Rashawn Parkinson, the pig number 10, in there as well. And Damira Hill knows he will have potentially a challenging night in goal but he has the experience in his fourth season of the Da Costa Cup, although he hasn't always been the first choice, he has been for all of this season. And he has been massive for Dinto throughout the season, like he said, since getting the opportunity and thrown a lifeline, have not really lost in the Da Costa Cup. Free kick for Clarendon College. Wall does its job. Now Javon Redmond. They have really set it in the last five minutes. Dwayne Green with the throw. Green gets it back, the transfer from Holy Trinity this season. And maybe that break initiated by coach Xavier Gilbert, the keeper, Hill going down, would have helped to settle and, and break the momentum for Clarendon College. And that's part and parcel the reason why we've seen Dintel really coming into this one. doing a better job of reading those long balls now. Williams. They have to do better than till in terms of not being so open. It's almost like football suicide if you're playing this clan and college team. Very open. Teche Williams. For Howell. Howell attempting the back pass. Looking for Redman and Redman probably tripped himself. Well, is that, that or Reed had a crunching tackle on him? It's Reed there who went in hard on Redman. Shane Baker sends it long for Dintil. 
Williams. Winning it for Clarendon College. And then fall from behind, getting the free kick. Dintel settling now with every passing minute, just seemingly getting that little bit better. Yeah, I think I think the game plan for Clarendon coming into this one is that they wanted a goal in the first 15 minutes that they've seen their last three games they have they were not able to to score in the, the first half including that champions cup they wanted a goal early in this one so for me dintel will be happier of the two teams here in this 20, 24th minute ball floated inside the area Diamond College will win it with Smart. Diagonal ball looking for Granville. Well read. Look at the grounds that Lane made up just now. He really doesn't give anything up. He's a, like I said, skillful player, has good speed, but as Coach Gilbert says, a very hard worker. They are all working on in the first 25 minutes. You felt they had to, to keep the scoreline at nil all. High tempo, good intensity on the part of both teams. Clarendon College now. William slips it in the path of Larman. Larman with the cross looking for the arriving chambers. I think it was Granville on that occasion, but the vital interception there from Thompson. Dintel at the other end, Lane inside the box. Heads it back into Dangerland. Prince Daniel Smith, aware and alert. Has a word with Mr. Redmond. I didn't like how Redmond came in on him after he collected, just give him a bounce there, both of them exchanging words. What you come to expect in a final, fierce and competitive. It's all good competition once it doesn't get out of hand. And they kept it within the realms of the game there just now. We see Redmond just coming in too hard for the liking of Prince Daniel Smith there. Exchanging pleasantries. Good evening. It's good to see you in this final. <laughs> Anything but. Lane. They call him Taximan, Rajir Lane, but ran into Howell traffic. Didn't navigate so well there, Lane, but in fairness to him, has found the right lane, the right part of the season in terms of coming good at the right time. Two goals in the semi finals, and a player now that Dintel is really putting a lot of their faith in in terms of expectancies. No goals yet. Marquis Campbell in that right back position, given the difficult job of staying with Jalen Larman. Well, he's gonna, he's what he's gonna quickly find it. It's not only gonna be Larman coming at him because uh, we have Granville. They normally switch sides throughout the game. Really good job by Lane to win the football for Dintel Technical. And as soon as he won it and made the pass, he was heading forward into space. But it's Karen and College at the other end.
Decisive defending from O'Shane Baker on Sheldon Smart. That's a worrying here for Dintil. Those balls that goes between center off and wing back into those wide spaces. Those are, are, are the balls that are really being played to good effect by Clarendon College. And Dintil will have to find a way to defend against it. And you feel they're going to have to try and put more pressure on the passer. Still some nerves on that bench, no doubt. I'm talking about nerves of these two teams, which you think would have a greater nerves. And you feel like Clarendon College coming into this one as the favourites and knowing that they just lost the Champions Cup. Granville. Jaim Rose. This is what Clarendon College do ever so often. When there are no options going forward, they are not impatient. They are quite willing to turn the ball all the way back in defence. But now they lose it in midfield. And Dintil Technical, once they get the ball, they are quite direct in their attack. Very much a direct team. They will not look to play around with it. They are quick on the counter. And we saw it to good effect against Cornwall College in the semi-finals. Appeal for handed ball. As I was saying in the semi finals, uh, they were under a lot of pressure in that second half against Cornwall College, and in the 73rd minute just broke free and Lane went on to finish. So they break quite quickly, normally through Lane. Sent forward by Green, picked up by Lane. Oh, Lane got around two. But there was no way he was getting by Richard King. Here's a shot. Looked innocuous initially from Karen Bryant. In any case, goalkeeper Prince Daniel Smith had a clear view of it and watched it go by his far post. Well, I will lift the mood of the supporters and the a substitute on the bench not doing much other than that but um, lane two had broken off and was looking for a ball slip to be slipped through to him that didn't come but like i said always lift the mood of the players getting a shot off dintil we've gone past 30 glorious minutes dintil getting into this contest but you still get the feeling Clarendon College can strike at any moment here's Roger Granville Granville has just come back deeper now in the formation, he plays one of the wide striker position. Will always be required to track back. To help out his fullbacks, whichever side he's on. So yeah, he gets deep sometimes. But that too can be as a result, sometimes not getting enough of the football. And the longer it goes on like this, then you know, maybe Clarendon College will be thinking, maybe we've held scoreless in last two first half and even in our last game lane in the path of karen bryan it's been a workman-like effort from lane so far gentil love to attack from this left side ball floated up at the top of the area would have taken something special to test prince daniel smith from there doesn't matter safia gilbert is liking it and so are they 
I'm telling you, it, it, the fact that Clarendon College did not score in that first 15, 20 minutes, uh, Dintil would have been the happy of the two teams. And we see a big smile. We saw a big smile just now from Coach Gilbert. He's liking what is happening here. Because, as I said, Clarendon College will be thinking, is this deja vu all over again in terms of not being able to score when we have the ascendancy and the team coming back to hit us? Just able to have a little bit more of the football now. Dintil Technical. Larman. Larman goes down. Referee waves it off. Dintil away but unable to escape. Definite ploy from Dintil to try and prevent Clarendon College from having quick restarts to the game. We've seen now for the umpteen time in this encounter where they're stopping the restart from Clarendon College. That occasion it was Parkinson who upset the rhythm and stopped Clarendon College from taking that quick throw in. Dintel on the attack. King in the way. And a second touch there from Dintel there would have been favorable for King. He just came across and acted as the cover defender. Campbell with the throw. Nothing dangerous coming from it. Dintil having some possession. Flag stays down and the attack continues. The cross will come in. The header towards the target. No venom on it, but then he didn't have a lot of space. It was a good cross in the box. It had to generate a lot of pace. It was way out almost on the edge of the box. It was going to be difficult for the attacker. Can't even call that ambition. <laughs> it's just it's just excitement, youthful exuberance. They're they're back in the game and they're just overflowing with confidence there. And you will excuse him for it because after the opening 15, 20 minutes, you would have felt they would have been be behind in this encounter to, to have been level at this stage and uh, doing well. And you would excuse him for thinking he could go for goal from there. You don't want to get too overconfident. Not against this Clarendon College team. Critical they stay with the game plan. Howell. Larmer no over on the right, but the ball is given away. Parkinson plays it back. Now with Lane. Lane's cross going away from the target. There were players free. Well, there was at least one. I think he tried to play it back, and it was the right intention because it wasn't a, square wasn't on. Granville now comes under a challenge. Dintil technical showing tenacity. Karen and College not relenting. And they are dangerously poised. Chambers' a shot block comes to Lerman. Shailen Lerman spanks it over the top. It's a glorious opportunity there for Clarendon College to take the lead. One of the best chances of the game. And we see a drive-in run 
And then once, once that ball came into the box, but you felt Chambers' shot was just too tame, was never going to beat Hill. But once it fell to Larman, leaning back all the time, rising the ball once it left his boot. Mix up in the Gentil technical defense. And Jalen Larman let them off the hook. An immediate reaction from Coach Hyde. He knew, he just knew that was, that's an a big opportunity miss. And maybe felt that even Larman could have passed back to Chambers. But both attempts were lacking one thing or the other for Larman. It was the execution for, in terms of technique, for... Let us not forget that in the semi-finals of the Da Costa Cup last year, Dindil Technical held Clarendon College at nil all at the halftime break. And Clarendon College sprinted away to a 4-0 victory. Yeah, so they will know that they have to continue to do this. And I guess, I guess in that clip there we saw Coach Gilbert just reminding them that the task is, is very, very far from being over. As we see uh, two of the Dintel players getting warmed up there. But yeah, just men ensuring. And he says his style in terms of being very animated on the touchline keeps his players uh, just in tune on their toes. For sure. He speaks to them loudly, like most coaches do. Lane gets it. Lane is onside. Lane with the cross. Clarendon College caught napping at the back. It's not bedtime yet, folks. You're still in a contest. And give credit to these two teams. They're really making a good spectacle here and really keeping the crowd in the contest. And they're creating a good atmosphere. This is a large size, large size crowd here at Catherine Hall. 40 minutes worthy of being at the Costa Cup final. Most definitely no goals in it, but very much an exciting contest. Cannon will be mindful. They will not want to give Jay Lane lots of time on the ball to look up and pick his pass or cross in the box. That last cross could really have been trouble. It was a beautiful cross, it had a lot of pace and it just needed someone to redirect. Larman. Oh, trying to cut it back inside. Might have gone for goal, Larman, but with his earlier miss, probably not feeling confident. Dintel starting to give as much as they're getting. Or close to it. There's Karen Bryan. Transferred from Denby High School last season. His second season with the Dintel team. Played two the Costa Cup seasons with the Denby High team. We've seen so often in schoolboy football this season where players go to the turf quite often. We usually see it somewhere midway the second half, but the intensity of this contest has been such that you wonder if it will come sooner. Yeah, it's really started at a blistering pace and it has maintained that pace throughout, in, in some cases picked up. It's really a good contest. And uh, both teams are really leaving everything out there on the pitch. That's what you have to do when you get to a final. There are no second chances. Well, not this year at least.
Larman. Larman with a good cross. Smart did not control. And another opportunity missed for think, the champions. I think on that occasion, maybe Smart didn't need to control that one. Maybe just needed to maybe have a look here to see. Just to try and swing that right boot as it comes across the body. That would have been a better option. Just as it comes in here, just to open his body up and redirect it on goal with that right boot. And he would have known all about that. He did that just recently. Larman for Chambers. Chambers lifts it inside the area. Right at Demira Hill. And Granville was always under pressure. It's always going to be difficult to try and really place that header. Looks as if the flag was up in any case. Teshe Williams trying to win it in the middle of the park for Clarendon College. Unsuccessfully so. Campbell sends it forward. All of a sudden, all the Clarendon College passes are not landing where they want. This is a delivery floated inside the box. Prince Daniel Smith on the money. And you talk about them not landing the passes where they want to. And we saw normally you get a Clarendon College team, even in defense, not looking to hack it out all the time. And we saw on that occasion just showing some signs of panic and just booting it upfield. If they didn't feel it at the start, surely now they know they're in a contest. The first stanza winding down. Goes from distance, produces save spectacular. Roger Granville, the Clarendon College number 14, with a serious test of a Demira Hill in goal. He really got hold of that once he tucked inside, got some room. He let fly a curling effort on goal. And goalkeeper Hill had to get that one over the bar. But in fairness, Granville has always been a threat for Clarendon College. Player to watch. Watch him. Dintel technical. Watch him. Here's a corner kick. Hill punches away. Two minutes to be added at the end of this first stop. Clarendon finishing the way they started. Strong. With purpose. Larman with the cross. Right at Hill. Who needed to collect cleanly because there were three Clarendon College players waiting for the slightest of slips. Yes, that ball being played into the box, box from Larman. And yes, Hill had to make the catch because, as you said, if he had spilled that one, there were three options to knock it in. One minute of the two added out the way. And trust me, this first half has flown by. It's a good contest. And when you get contests like these, time just seemed to go by so quickly. But he was here, Coach Gilbert, in the semi-finals last season when they held the Clarendon College to the goalless draw at half-time. And he will be mindful that a lot of work still to be done. Do you feel he would have learned his lesson? He will also be confident that his team is better equipped. Here's the lovely ball coming in for Chambers! David Chambers slams another one over the top. A good opportunity there again falling away, but how did he get so much space in the box? I mean, at that moment, the, 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 the Dintel defenders were at sixes and seven. Can't say they didn't have their chances. Can't say they didn't have their chances. A first stanza worth watching. Dintel technical holding on to the very end. Clarendon College 
unable to let their dominance count. And at half time in this thrilling Da Costa Cup final in Montego Bay, Karn yeah. nil all at the half time break. Now they must refocus and get ready for the second stanza. Dintil Technical must continue to focus on the goal at hand. Richard Palmer, the Clarendon College manager, having a strong word with Ding Chambers, no doubt telling him to forget about the misses of the first half. And Dintil Technical will feel relieved that they did not concede in the first 45. Most definitely, especially in that first 20, 25 minutes of that 45, first 45, they were really under siege, under pressure. And uh, that once they, they, they weathered that storm, then you saw them coming into their own later on into that in, the, in that first half. But you saw Chambers early and you felt it might just be some uh, lingering things coming out of the, the dressing room at halftime where he had two opportunities and uh, missed them. Might have come under some pressure from his teammates or, or, or other coaching staff. Brace yourselves. Brace yourselves for the second stanza of this thrilling Da Costa Cup final. The best may be yet to come. Klein and Khalid started the first half strongly and they finished it with as much flurry. And the run of play, yes, Dintel came into the game, but Clannon College should have been ahead in this one, but the, they have had the better chances. And so this game being at nil all is down to some good work from Dintel, but also woeful finishing from Clannon College. Indeed. Virgil Lane, Karen Bryan as well. Solid games for Dintil in the first half. Whenever they had opportunities, they were able to move the ball quickly. And their direct attacking style on a couple of occasions presenting slight problems for the Clarendon College defense, but none of the crosses landing exactly where they would have hoped. Yeah, some good cross. A few came in from Lane, but it just not hitting his intended target. And we saw that the bulk of Dintil's attack came down that their left hand side, Clarendon College right hand side, and looking to exploit the space left by the advancing fullback. Remember, it was nil all at half time in last year's semi final. Clarendon College went on to win by four goals to nil. In case you'd forgotten, Clarendon College have beaten Dintil Technical at the semi final stage in the last two editions. Now they are meeting one stage further in the ultimate match. Well, Dilton will want to quickly forget those two losses he just mentioned and probably run back to 1981 when they la last won it, uh, the Da Costa Cup, and it was a Clarendon College that they got past on that occasion. When they won it for the first time in 1979, they had succeeded Clarendon College as champions. So they could achieve both things tonight if they win it. Yes, Succeed they, them <laughs> as champions and beat Clarendon College. Uh, most definitely. So that's, I think, that's where I think if history were to come into it, Coach Gilbert will want to take his boys in terms of reminding them of that and forget about the other histories. Throw for Clarendon College. Omar Reed goes long in the box. The keeper comes, does brilliantly. Demira Hill growing in confidence, showing all the experience he's gathered over the last four seasons. King threads it forward. 
for CC. The start to this second half, not as frantic as the first. They would have given a whole lot in that first half and that 15 minutes break still not sufficient to punish the body enough or to get enough rest. And so it would have been quite difficult for them to continue at the high pace of that first half. Oh, that's a lovely ball coming across. Flag is up. I think he knew it too, Roderick Granville. And we have a look here to see if he was well aware. Well, this Ooh. is well, well Ooh. onside, Granville. It's a very poor call. It wasn't even close. Wow. We've seen that before in this competition. At this stage of the competition, the very best you want in those positions. Granville is onside, gets it to Smart. Smart shot is blocked. Danger still lurking. But touching Williams, final shot, well wide of the target. I felt Smart could have played in Chambers on that occasion. Once he is, is passing or shooting lane had been closed. Here we see Chambers was just to his right. Could have just slid a pass to him. He would have had a clearer shot on goal. Just hasn't gone Clarendon College's way tonight. I think the decision and the execution in the final third has let them down so far. Let's not forget. Let us not forget how Dintil Technical got here. They were pretty much out. And then Charlemont sanctioned for using an ineligible player. Dintil got those points. Five extra then won their last preliminary match against McGraw by a goal to nil. And then they haven't lost since in the Da Costa Cup. Seven straight wins to get them here. Tell you what, if they were to go on to win, it is a perfect example of taking an opportunity of a lifeline thrown to you, because that's what it was for Dintel. Marquis Campbell, header, well wide. He met this one so well, Campbell. She got good contact on it, just couldn't read, couldn't direct it on target, but really met it well. Russian Parkinson there with the header. They're not about playing that ball out of their defensive area, didn't tell technical. Don't mind banging it downfield. But now Clarendon College will get a chance to come forward. Oh, Tamira Hill coming. And that squeezes past the left upright. For once, Tamira Hill didn't get his run right. And nor the defender. They didn't work their, 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 their movements out. Not a lack of communication on that occasion there. As we see here, it's a header back goalkeeper was coming. And that would have been a header for a goalkeeper staying on his line. Must have been some seriously nervous seconds. But there was a slight push from Smart in the back of the defender that headed it back. But by that time, the goalkeeper was well out of position. And many thought that with no Western teams in the Da Costa Cup, we would not have had this turnout here at Catherine Hall. Still a, a decent-sized crowd on hand to witness this Da Costa Cup final. And they have been treated. He doesn't feel treated, at least not yet. <laughs> definitely not yet. He definitely would have felt that his team is not firing today. Said he wanted a perfect game from his team. Coach Hyde hadn't gotten it all season. And this would have been the perfect occasion to have a perfect game. Uh, not so much so because in front of goal, they have been lacking in terms of the quality of finishing. They have done everything right except score, which is the most critical aspect of 
their business. Corner kick, Clarendon College. Five waiting inside the area. Now Tajay Williams joins in to make it six. Lots of barging going on. And so the referee has to step in as Omar Reed gets ready to take corner kick number two of the contest for Clarendon College. Reed steps up with the left foot. Reed again. Space on the left. Granville in space. Roger Granville on the football. Goes for the one time pass. A captain's header. And the champions are in front. Earl Simpson rising high. Tamara Hill had no chance. And Clarendon College are on their way. And finally they get their decision right ball played out to Granville and what a beautiful ball into the box served it up and Simpson rose so well met it and gave goalkeeper Hill no chance beautiful ball into the box curving away just teasing the goalkeeper Hill there feeling like he could go for it then had to backtrack by that time Simpson had his head on it and gave him, giving him no chance Clarendon College, you mentioned it, Ricardo. Uh, they were held nil all. They went on to win it by four goals to nil the last time they met in a decider. They're well on their way again. His second goal of the season, Earl Simpson. Dental Technical must now find a way to score. Let's also not forget that in the semi finals against McGraw High, it was nil all at half time, and Clarendon College went on to win it 3 nil. Yes, and as you felt, the concentration had to be right. The one team that we, s we have seen so far this season that has really kept them from scoring, Kingston College and the Champions Cup, who really played it to perfection right. The game plan was just put on and they played it, didn't lose their concentration, kept their shape throughout the 90 minutes. Corner kick for Dintel Technical. Can they find a way back into this? This one is high and away from the target and will not be kept in. Let's talk about Roderick Granville for a second. We talk about the eight goals that he scored this season. That was his 15th assist of the campaign. He's a selfless player, Granville. He really always looked to bring his team into it. And I've said earlier, even when Clarendon College is not flowing at their best, Granville has always been a player who shows up. He's, he's not, even when he has his misses, he will also be one who really makes things happen for this team. He works hard, he's always up and down, always presenting himself for the pass through the channel as we see a substitution there. Russian uh, Parkinson is out. Shavon Thompson comes on in the 57th minute. There's only one player on the Dintil technical bench who has scored this season. That's Milton Brooks. They need a goal. And they're going to have to come from the ones on the pitch or maybe somebody just step up for the big moment. But St. Granville, just massive for this Clarendon College team. Here he is again, Granville. They have given him so much space. And that's the difference with this Dintel setup here today. As I said, I saw them in the... National Stadium watching on when Clarendon played Kingston College, he felt they would have taken some lessons from that. Just not tight enough, not close enough, not closing down enough, and not blocking those passing lanes. It can be so difficult, of course, when there is so much quality coming from the opposition. It's called for concentration, Ricardo. You have to be in tune with it, just keep doing it, believing in it. And let's be honest, we could be looking at a completely different game if Clarendon College had taken their opportunities in the first half. Omar Reed serves up another one. And you're quite right about that. They really missed a lot of chance in the first half.
expect to think that Dintel might have been flattered by the scoreline the amount of chances missed by Clarendon. This is where Clarendon College can be so dangerous. When they get one, it can open the floodgates. And that's truly because it's difficult for the opponent. He now has to open up and play, and this team has enough quality to pass through. Larman, his pass cut out. Dintel trying to string a couple of passes together. Now they go forward on the right. Lane trying to cut inside. Lane under pressure as usual. They have no doubt picked him up as the main man for Dintel Technical, and they are marking him. On that occasion, you had about three players around him, not giving him the space to operate, and that's what Dintel needs to do for the. The, the, the players that are causing them problem from Clarendon College. Players like Granville, they need to be much tighter. Here's a shot that goes well wide. And Coach Gilbert, he must find a plan B here. Must find a way to to score. Dintel on the attack. Corner kick. Karen Bryan. knows his team is still in it but he also knows they are up against it most definitely and you will see these set pieces as the perfect opportunity to get back into the game marquis campbell with the corner kick Powell dealing with it quite well on a couple of occasions. The parish of Clarendon is the most successful in the Costa Cup history. As Andre Nicholson is getting ready to come on to the park. So he replaces Larman. Larman normally usually one of the players, but his last two outings we've seen where it's not been quite as effective. We saw it in the Champions Cup and here tonight. Not so much into this contest, so not a surprise that he's been withdrawn. Could have given them the lead. Omar Reed has pace. Omar Reed with another lovely cross. The keeper goes and doesn't get it. And the shot is into the side netting. Nicholson onto the park. He could have had a golden touch. Either getting a goal or setting up a teammate. Could cross into the box there from Reed. Goalkeeper feeling he could get it, but curving away from him. Don't think he was quite sure exactly what he wanted to do, Andre Nicholson. In the end, he did nothing. And instead of him kicking the ball, it hit him, Granville. Reed, another teasing cross. You could see Demira Hill uncertain as to whether to come for it or to stay on his line. Yes, those have been a feature of the crosses coming in from Cranon College. It's curving away from the goalkeeper. Free kick, which they take quickly. Referee will have none of it. The ball was rolling at the time when Dintel wanted to restart the game, and you're not allowed that. Ball must stop moving. You can see what they wanted to do. They say great players come alive when the ball is dead. And they were looking to try and catch Clarendon College out there.
Clarendon College on course for the Costa Cup title number nine. That sums up Dintel's position. And they were the ones making a lot of noise, the bulk of the noise. But there is still hope and there is still time. The parish of Clarendon, the most successful in the history of the Da Costa Cup. 21 titles for that parish. Veer Technical leading that parish with nine titles. And if Clarendon College win today, they will join them. Of course, Cornwall College from the West, the winningest school in the Costa Cup history, ahead of Rassiz with 11. So if Clarendon win tonight, there you have it. They will go to nine and join Veer Technical in that third position. Monroe College with seven titles. Most of those in what you would call the pre-modern era. <laughs> they say it's still counting. They always have that defense of Monroe College. But not surprised with Clarendon, Clarendon as a parish because in our country here, they have arguably the best youth system as a parish, Clarendon. Nicholson, his pass is cut out. Inauspicious start for the substitute. So Clarendon with 21 titles. St. James, the next best parish with 15. Uh, as I said before, they're known for their youth football, Clarendon. And I guess the parish of St. James, known for their football. Not bad themselves, not bad. Hill watches that one go by. Must be hard to be a coach. It, it, it is a stressful, a stressful job. I can tell you that. Being a coach myself, sometimes just can't seem to get your message across. Ball given away to Tashay Williams. Williams for Jaheim Rose. Rose sees Granville running into space. This time he is closed down, but Rose overlaps and comes in with the cross. And then a corner kick given up. Panic mode there from Adintil in defense. And Granville, beautiful drop pass, back heel. Well, it has been tense. Nothing wrong with the little comedy. <laughs> Until, until we want to not be a part of the comedy moment. They won't find it funny if Clarendon College scores here. Corner kick. Oh, dangerous. They're floating around. The whistle goes. Yeah, I think it came off the hand of smart and no advantage will be given once it hits the arm of a striker or an attacker irons the idea is drying up for Dintel technical but once they can keep it at 1-0, they will feel there is a chance. You're right with that, Ricardo. You just have to take a look back at the semi-finals against Cornwall College when Cornwall put on the pressure and equalised. Dintel was really under the cost when in the 73rd minute. Just one moment. And it was Lean who took it. So they know that they can just, with their counter-attack in play, create an opportunity for themselves at any point in time. The GFF president, Michael Ricketts, 
himself a former president of the Clarendon Football Association in the mix. And he's smiling. Because he knows the country's football is in decent hands. Dintil going forward now. Let's see what they can make of this. The numbers just were not there to effect a pass. And neither was the patience to hold the ball up and wait for company. Rose. Wayward pass. Marquis Campbell trying to go forward. Marquis Campbell played his youth football at Old Harbour High School, then transferred to Rasiz. Was there when they won the Da Costa Cup and V Clarendon College in 2017. Then from Rasiz to Dintil Technical. So wherever he goes, he wins. And a much travelled player. Or wherever he goes, they win. Well, let's see what will happen to Dintil. Well, Rasiz won. Wherever he goes, he wins. No doubt about it. Whether it's in the National Premier League yeah, or in schoolboy football with Clarendon College. He knows how to win and I understand he's coming to... He's in my parish. I think his next, next duty after the Costa Cup is over is with Falmouth United. Granville. Dittendale technical player down. Might be Carlington Facey. Yeah, the 16-year-old just getting a knock to the face. Started high school at Geisel High, Carlington Facey. Geisel, not too far away from Dintil. Just one bus ride. And Dintil now not too far away from getting back in this game. It's only 1-0. Has a 1-0 deficit ever seen so big? <laughs> and it's kind of college apparently, maybe. <laughs> there is hope though. There is hope. And Dintil Technical will know all about hope. They'll know all about second chances. Marquis Campbell cannot believe the call has not gone in his favor. He's worked overtime tonight. Just over the top, dear, going over the top and always going to be a free kick. Can you believe it? If you had to pick a goal scorer for Clarendon College tonight, probably wouldn't be Earl Simpson. But I did point out every single player has scored. Here's a shot. Blocked. Dintil trying to make something of this and they'll have a corner. When you have a team like that where you have so many scorers, except here only your outfield, outfield players scores then it's very difficult to contain because any, at any moment there's so much quality match winners on the park this is when you need your supporters to help keep you in it second corner kick of the game for Dintil Technical wasn't a bad one they will have a third and they'll need to make it count, like I said, it is the set pieces which I think is going to be their best avenue of getting back into this contest. Another corner kick. Headed away. Heads them well on the attacking end and now on the defensive end, Earl Simpson. Dintil trying to find a way. Javonne Redman. He's transferred from Waterford. These two teams, both of them, 
don't have many born and bred players. Oh, they're going to have to be doing that shortly with the new rules coming in next, taking effect next season where we can only bring in three players. Well, they will make hay while the sun shines. Granville is into space again. Decided not to go for the shot. Now has it on the left foot. Chips it across. Picked up by Nicholson. Williams is waiting. Finds Williams now. Felt the shot was on the first time for Granville. Once he cut it back, it was always going to be difficult because he had placed the defender between himself and goal. You can see why he has 15 assists this season. Probably need to be a little bit more selfish sometimes. But whatever he has done so far this season has been to good effect for his clan in college. So Prince Daniel Smith was part of a promising Camperdown team that just could not get over the line. And here he is on course for a championship title. Yeah, looking good to getting over the line this time, Prince Daniel Smith. They've chosen a good team or school to give him a good chance of winning a title. Couldn't have come at a better place. Couldn't have come to a better place. So Facey has been substituted. And the only player on the bench who has scored this season for Dintil Technical, Milton Brooks, makes his way onto the park. The number three, the transfer from Charlemont last year, replaces the 16-year-old. Well, no surprises there from Coach Gilbert. He needs goals, so turn to the one sub that he thinks can give it to him on the coming off the bench. The one sub who is sure knows how to do it. <laughs> At least once. Dintel still fighting, still plugging away. Clarendon College will want the final blow now. Yellow card for Shavon Thompson. Came on as a 57th minute substitute. Can't have too much complaint there. Carnland College, they have made the left side their own tonight, starting from the first half with Larman. You heard the coach kept telling Marquis Campbell to stay with him, stay with him. It's easier said than done. Good, good pace there, good driving run into the box. And there we saw Chambers just coughing his first shot. And then when it came to Larman, definitely, definitely should have done better. Yeah, creating so many opportunities from that left side. And it was from an attack on the left that that delightful cross was put in by Roderick Granville and headed on by the captain, Earl Simpson. And Dintel Technical have not done enough to stop them in that department tonight, and they have paid for it. They have not done enough in front of goal either to get back into this contest. That needs to change as well. Smart, Smart is down. That looked like his own doing. I would say Brian didn't make an attempt to go for the ball, so on that occasion, yes, he would have been guilty of committing an infringement there. That can be a, na a nasty fall there. Often we've seen players come down and hurt themselves. Karen Brian looking a tad frustrated. And you can understand why Smart remains down. Now Brian made no attempt to, to go for the ball, just wanted to put off Smart. They will give everything they have, Dintil Technical. Could it possibly come from the bench? Any possibility 
is is there for Dintel because it hasn't been done from the players on the park so far. And he still yet have to turn to his bench, Coach Gilbert. So Jaheim Rose is off in the 79th minute and is replaced by Kenroy Stoddart. They look pleased. I would be too. Granville. I would be slightly anxious in a Clarendon College position until they completely put this game away. Sure, it's, it's definitely a fragile lead. Stoddart. Gives that ball away. And Dintel have not been able to bring Elaine into the game as much as they would have liked in the second half. Some of it too is the doing of Clarendon College who quickly close him down once he gets in possession. He's the player that they would have expected to really help them in their counter-attacking play. He's normally their outlet. And in, in, in that situation, they will have to ensure that other players may have to step up in situations like that when your main player has been marked so tightly. Uh, King doing a good number on him. And as I said earlier, people like Granville were always willing to track back. And in a 4-3-3 system, the wide attackers are expected to come back and help create numbers up for the wing backs. Goals have not been very easy to come by for Dintel Technical this season. They have only scored 13 when compared to 44 in the Da Costa Cup for Clarendon College. Well, 45, and this could be 46. Andre Nicholson closes the deal. And Clarendon College are surging to the Costa Cup title. No A poor lapse here from Dintel, architect here of their own downfall. And once it fell to Nicholson, and he really emphatically finished that one. He thumped that one past goalkeeper Hill. It just settled him, settled himself. And really, there was no doubt. Fierce, powerful, and emphatically finished. Dintel technical seem all out of comebacks. The Invincibles. Jamaican High School Invincibles. Won the title unbeaten last year. They're going to do it again this year. It's, it's, it's very much on course for that. And, and, and to even add to it, to show how, how good that finish was, was the substitute Nicholson. He waited until goalkeeper Hill committed himself and then just thumped it over him. Xavier Gilbert and his boys gave it a good shot. They have given it a good shot. And looked like a beaten man. But quality tells. Most definitely. They say football is a talent sport. And they might not be done yet. There were better options. It was definitely even to himself where he could have taken it on and go further, but having just scored Nicholson his third of the season. And remember, it will he would, he's the type of player that you look at and you say, you know, he makes the coach look like a genius. Pulled off Larman, who is normally a good player for Dintel, for 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 a Clarendon, but Early on, when he just came on, couldn't sort himself out. At one stage, Riccardi, you said he wasn't sure what he wanted to do. But that finish, there was no doubt. Absolutely no doubt. The first ball that came to him, didn't know what he wanted to do. It hit him and went behind for a goal kick. But Larman had missed a few opportunities and rightly taken off. When you have 
that much quality on the bench, you can take off a player like Larman who is having an off night. Most definitely, you don't have to wait too long. Marquise Campbell won't taste victory tonight, at least it doesn't seem so. Dintel undone by Clarendon again, it seems. Could they come back? Could they actually come back, Dintel Technical? Well, not on the evidence of what we've seen before us tonight. I don't think they've had too much of clear chances in this the 85th minute. No boardroom in sight. <laughs> and it is with those boardrooms that you've seen them have the biggest score lines in 3 0. Dintil. But still give them credit the fact that they were a dead and buried. They took the opportunity given to them and up to the point where they got those five extra points. They had not won a game to that point and they flip the script in terms of switching position with with Charlie Mount and boy have they taken the opportunity but their supporters are still urging them on the fans have not been louder than they are now they have certainly helped make in this, this event a spectacle they've really made the atmosphere one that you enjoy being in. Dino. Three consecutive finals for Clarendon College. Two wins. That's what it's looking like. And I think at the start of the season, At the start of the season when they played Lennon here, they drew that game and many felt that they didn't look as good as some would have expected. And many felt that the, the loss of Daly and Walker would have hurt them badly. Clarendon College, they just keep finding a way. They have a huge reservoir of talent from which to choose. And no Da Costa Cup team has been able to stay with them this season. Irons exits the game. And Alex Johnson comes on. Smart finds Chambers. Chambers trying to create room for Williams. Oh, Williams is trying to be too cute. That pass from Chambers deserved a goal. That was a cheeky dink over the top. Uh, just as the defenders were stepping up, he just dinked it over. Beautiful run from Williams, though. Timed it to perfection. Stayed on side. Tashe Williams has gone to five schools. Five schools, two in St. Thomas. His latest one was Excelsior. And how he could have finished this emphatically for Clarendon College. How do you go to five high schools? <laughs> and have consistency in what you do. It's important it stays clean. It's been a good game. But Clarendon College in this occasion, they have no need to, they are winning this encounter and no need to be caught in any fracas at this moment. It's been a contest worthy of a final. Prince Daniel Smith, don't spoil your moment. And look how far he would have had to travel to come to be a part of this situation. 
when you say travel, you mean from Camperdown or from his goal area? <laughs> well, if it's to win the Costa Cup, yes, Camperdown. If it's to be a part of that little unsavory moment, it's from his goal area. And no need for him to do so. From the goal area, that is. But he'll tell you for coming from Camperdown, it was the right move to come here because he looks set to lift in a schoolboy title here. A couple of minutes trickling away. Those, no doubt, will be added. Just wondering what would have caused that little moment there where a player seemed to have lost their cool. Well, Sheldon Smart is on the turf. The stretcher is on. Dwayne Green, don't they? Oh, let's have a look. It seemed to be Weatherburn, Ty who, Weatherburn. who really had butted, and that's a, a red card offense. Not spotted, apparently, by the officials. But that's a headbutt. Yeah. Dwayne Green was down over on the far side for Dintel Technical. Now, let's have a look. And there you see it, the headbutt coming in from Wedderburn on Smart. The referee did not see it because he was attending to Dwayne Green, who was down by the sideline. Yes, he would have needed the help of his assistants. But we've seen a bite this season. And here we have a headbutt. Not. Well, and again, and the, the ball is dead. We are on 90 minutes. Apparently, Wedderburn not taking the loss easy at all. Zakia Wilkes is going to get a few minutes in the Da Costa Cup final. Replacing Sheldon Smart. It's very, very poor from Wedderburn. One minute of four added already out the way we have confirmation of smart not being able to continue after getting that headbutt they'll also be thinking that there's the olivia shield to come that will be against jamaica college talk about second chances <laughs> yes jamaica college knows all about that as well and college would have started and once they got on in the season many expected them to win the treble Still on course for a double. Wilkes taken down. A repeat of a double from last season. Another chance. No mistake from Tashe Williams. We'll start the celebrations with Tashe Williams' ferocious finish. And what he couldn't have done from about six yards, he did from about 12 yards out. Got an easier chance early on. Totted by goalkeeper Hill. This time, he makes no mistake. Picks the spot quite well. Struck it well. And as they say, Carindon, it's one done. It's Clarendon. From St. Thomas to Kingston to Clarendon. There will be celebrations for Tajay Williams' goal. Four nil in the semi-finals last year after a nil all first half. It's three nil now with less than a minute to go and he's just grown a few more gray hairs. <laughs> a lot more you would feel, yeah. 
lessons not learned from last season yeah maybe still time to for it to be four but maybe the best he has can hope for is just one less than he got last season coach Gilbert it just felt that the tactics employed early in the game just was a bit too open and like I said in the first half it was just a, a, a lack of quality from Clarendon why the game ended nil all at half time just a bit too open you cannot and Dintel just did not and they don't have the quality to match this Clarendon College team in an open game this could be it this is it another victory parade awaits in Chapleton The celebrations will go on. Clarendon College beat Dintil by three goals to nil in the 2019 Da Costa Cup final. That's a big win here for Clarendon when they started here on the opening day of the Costa Cup against Lennon. I said, didn't look like champion, but talking about getting your team to peak at the right time, steadily improved, and uh, when it matters most, a day delivered. It's never easy when you're the favorites. All the pressure is on you. Clarendon College have delivered and in no uncertain manner. They beat Dintil by three goals to nil and lift their ninth the Costa Cup title. Brings this prestigious symbol. Clarendon College lifts it again. Champions again. Really worthy champions and these uh, Clarion College players, what they're getting used to lifting this trophy, they can probably tell you the exact weight of it. And this is a team that has really thrilled us this season. And uh, there we see them in a buoyant, happy mood. And uh, they really, really deserve it. And uh, on their day, most of the time is their day, they have really thrilled us with some really good football, slick passing, moving football. Everyone wants a touch, and why not? <laughs> Someone is running away with it. You gotta catch him. You have to catch him. Well, he has a lot of energy, Fletcher, because he didn't kick a ball tonight, apparently. So he's just expressing himself. Colin Fletcher having a grand time. Clarendon College, they deserve to do exactly that. Shawana Banks has had a grand time as well. wonder what she's up to. Yes, Ricardo, thank you so much. And I absolutely have to agree with you here.